Chai Town. Yeah. Drama. Drama. What? What? Gabe Morales, back for another episode of Chicago Games. Up until this point, I've mostly covered predominantly Mexican games and focused on the Pilsen area. Today, we are going to cover a game that had its roots elsewhere, but is still steeped deep in the tradition of games in the Windy City. This game was predominantly Puerto Rican, or Boricuas, as many prefer to be called, although they didn't have people from other cultures present, even from the early days, and still do today. The foundation of the insane Spanish Cobras was initially a family-ran group that dates back to the year 1958 in the streets of Bridgeport, located on Chicago's south side. In the late 1950s, Puerto Rican people began to move into Bridgeport housing projects, located at 31st and Halstead. At the time, Bridgeport was filled with greaser gangs, and most of the community preferred it to remain a white neighborhood and did not take kindly to Black or Hispanic people moving into their area. But... The local project's low-income housing were one area where Black and Hispanic people often moved to due to public housing programs. As the first Puerto Rican people moved into the complex, they were not welcomed at all. In fact, many faced discrimination and harassment. An individual named Pepe Medina started to organize a group geared towards protecting the Puerto Ricans in Bridgeport, and he called this group Loco del Culebro which roughly translates to crazy snakes or insane snakes. He did this in 1958. The group was not very large in size. Like I said, it was mostly based on family members, relatives, and friends of theirs. It was at this time when Pepe became known as King Cobra, and he had a son who was well-known and popular named Richard Medina, who was born in 1959. While most Mexicans I know, except maybe New Mexico and parts of Texas refrain from using the term Spanish to describe themselves. Many Puerto Ricans and Cubanos, especially lighter skinned ones, seem to embrace that term. An example of this would be Spanish Harlem. So in 1960, Locos de Culebro renamed themselves Spanish Cobras, and the group began to grow. They even had a clubhouse on South Morgan Street that they would maintain until the mid 1970s when they left the area. Now, gangs in New York and Chicago had long been referred to as being jacket gangs. And just like biker clubs still do today, they would represent by showing their colors on their back. The Cobra's chosen colors were black and green. They also used a Cobra snake, a diamond with three dots, a long staff with a diamond and three dots, and a pitchfork to represent Folk's Nation by the late 1970s. In the 1960s, there was a lot of social programs, and some of these were formed to prevent gang violence. So gang workers tried to get the Cobras to unite with Imperial Gangsters, Latin Eagles, and Latin Disciples under the banner of the United Latino Organization. I'll come back to that in just a little bit. In the year 1969, three brothers, who were referred to as being the Twinkie Brothers, moved out of Bridgeport and settled in the East Humboldt Park neighborhood around Maplewood and Potomac. When these brothers arrived in the neighborhood, they joined a baseball team which had other local Puerto Rican youths in the neighborhood playing on it as well. These were members like the Godfather, Wee Wee, Teddy of the Latin Invaders, Jimmy, Hector, Slim, Mr. Mike, the Marty Twins, and others, many who were part of the Rosado family, who had several members in Spanish Cobras. These individuals became the first East Humboldt Park Spanish Cobras that would evolve into the insane Spanish Cobra nation we know of today. Their main rivals in the early days were the Latin Kings, the Puerto Rican branch. The original colors of the Bridgeport Cobras were actually black and maroon, but when the Cobras came to Humboldt Park, they changed to white and purple, and then later on to black and green. Just like in Bridgeport, many of these Puerto Rican youth were targeted for harassment, 
So they formed gangs like the Latin Invaders, which formed a Cambon Division in the East Humboldt Park area. In fact, Teddy and his brother Horace were some of the early members of the Invaders. Although the Twinkie brothers were the major players, the Cobra's founder, Pepe Medina, was still considered the leader. And he moved his children to East Humboldt Park at the same time as the Twinkies moved in. Pepe was much older, so he did not hang around the neighborhood kids that much. He was more like an advisor. But his son, Richard, was very visible and hung out with Puerto Rican youth in the East Humboldt Park area. At first, the group remained fairly small and tight knit. And like I said, most of them were related by blood. In fact, there's no known news articles of the Spanish Cobras before 1973. And it was about that time that they're often called Latin Cobras, erroneously by the media. By 1973, Richard Medina became well-known, and he took on the same nickname as his father, King Cobra. So basically, there was Big King Cobra and Little King Cobra. An individual named Caballo opened up a faction of Cobras on a t-shirt in Potomac in 1973, and he became the leader of that section. There was another faction in that area that called themselves Young Spanish Cobras, and they became known as shooters. They used lots of guns. A relationship eventually developed between Spanish Cobras and the Latin Disciples, and this led some of the Disciples of Cobras to call themselves Almighty back in the early 1970s. The Latin lovers were also Almighty when they formed in 1973. Richard Little King Cobra Medina was running his own section at Campbell in Potomac, and they recruited for quality, not quantity. Soon these Cobras spread to Halden and Washington, and eventually to Division and Maplewood, which became their headquarters. Even though he's only 14 years old, Richard Little King Cobra Medina had a lot of leadership skills, and he became a threat to other gangs. By the mid-1970s, the Spanish Cobra had a new enemy, and the Insane and Gnomes, who I'll cover briefly in a future episode. But I will say this, there was a war with the Insane and Gnomes for the creation over that title, Insane. It's my understanding there are a few Cobra factions, including the Renegade Cobras and Insane Cobras. By 1975, Medina had adopted black and green as official colors for the entire Cobra Nation. And like I said, he renamed them Insane Cobra Nation so when the Insane Unknowns popped up, this infuriated Medina. He demanded the Insane Unknowns drop Insane from their name, but they refused. And this is what started a war called the War of Insanity. Little King Cobra immediately reached out to the Latin disciples because he knew that the disciples were having problems with the United Five organizations, which was an alliance of white power gangs, the C Notes, the Gaylords, the Taylor Jousters, Chai West, and the PVPs, or PVRs. There was also the Latin Kings, who were growing tremendously at the time, trying to take over everything everywhere. Thus, the Young Latino Organization, or YLL, was born. By 1976, the Cobras expanded to Ridgeway and Thomas and to Springfield and Hirsch. A new section opened up at Fairfield and Lemoyne, at Haldwin and Washington, and Evergreen and Washington. The Evergreen Hustlers were active at Evergreen in Washtenaw and flipped Cobras at this time. In 1978, the Young Latino Organization opened up its doors to the Imperial Gangsters and Latin Eagles, who all joined forces. Joe Sparks told me that the Spanish Cobras stabbed at Latin King during the June 1977 Puerto Rican Parade. This became the catalyst for a humble park riots that lasted a day and a half. The Kings retaliated later that day. And as I mentioned in the introduction to Chicago Gangs video, Chicago police shot two Puerto Ricans, Rafael Cruz and Julio Rosario, after these gang fights. It was a, it was a misunderstanding between two Latin gangs, so why in the hell, who called the cops to come in and instigate? Right away they ask us, they tell us we all got to get out of the pipe because the pipe is closed. June 4th, 1977, several hours before the riots, a bomb went off at the Cook County government building that was attributed to members of the Fuerza Armadas de Liberación Nacional, or FALN. So it wasn't just street gangs that were involved. There was also radical political groups that were trying to stir it up between Puerto Ricans, Mexicans, and other Latinos, as well as blacks and the police. Approximately 3,000 people were involved in that riot. And besides the two Puerto Ricans that were shot, 
an additional individual was killed. 119 people were arrested and 38 police officers and three firefighters were injured during the riot. In April 1978, Larry Hoover, who was the king or chairman of the board of the Black Gangster Disciple Nation, created the Folk Nation Alliance behind prison walls. And his goal was to unite all of the GDs, BDs, as well as unify Latino gangs and white gangs as a countermeasure to the People Alliance that was formed in prison. The Spanish Cobras were one of the first Latino gangs that were asked to join the Folk Nation, as well as Imperial Gangsters, Latin Eagles, Orchestra in Albany, and Latin Disciples, all of which will be covered in future episodes. The Spanish Cobras became aligned with Simon City Royals and Almighty Insane Popes, which were predominantly white gangs that will be covered in future episodes. At this point, with the help of political organizations, the Spanish Cobras became highly organized, and a lot of that is credited to King Cobra, who became a bigger and bigger threat to other gangs and other gang leaders in Chicago. His brothers, Jaime and William, moved up to Milwaukee and started a Milwaukee chapter of Spanish Cobras. These guys knew how to organize and were spreading throughout the region. But on April 12, 1979, Richard King Cobra Medina had just pulled up to his residence at Maplewood and Division with his girlfriend and their newborn child. He knew things were tense in the neighborhood and told his girl to take the baby away quick. But as Richard began unloading the baby car seat, a car pulled up and fired several bullets into his body. He was later found by police, slumped over the baby seat, and dead on arrival. He was only 20 years old when he died, but is still revered by Spanish Cobras to this very day. It is said that the insane unknowns were to blame for his murder in retaliation for the killing of an, an original insane unknown named Ruben Perez. The Cobras, of course, sought revenge for the death of their leader, and basically this time was a bloodbath which became known as the War for Insanity. After King Cobra's death, Anibal Tuffy C. Santiago took over as new leader of the Spanish Cobras. And a few days later, the Spanish Cobras got their revenge when they shot up Ramon Papo Cruz, who was shot dead on North Springfield Avenue. It is said that Papo was an insane unknown. The Cobra shot him nine times. Police arrested James Rosado, aged 19 years old at the time, who was a Spanish Cobra. And then the unknowns got revenge for Papo's death. And then the Cobras retaliated, and it went back and forth. By the time it was all over, many people were dead. This all even made the newspaper when Chicago Mayor Jane Byrne stated that Chicago PD would react to all the deaths and crack down on the street gangs. But the war with the unknowns did not fizzle out until about 1981. And it is said that every year on the date of King Cobra's death, they tried to kill an unknown and would chant King Cobra's name before they went out on a mission. In 1981, Tuffy C., the new leader of the Cobras, was convicted for October 7th murder of Juan Gomez on the corner of Monticello and Cortland in Logan Square, and he was only 23 years old at the time. This case was also supposedly part of the War of Insanity. Here is a picture of Tuffy C. and David Ayala of the 2-6 in prison and both were considered leaders of their respective gangs and as part of the Folk Nation. In the early 1980s, the Spanish Cobras tried to take over Wicker Park around Bosworth and Lamont. This created yet another faction. It also spread in the Albany Park neighborhood in the 1980s, as well as other areas in Logan Square and other parts of the city, as well as into suburb areas like Waukegan, Elgin, Deerfield, Willing, and Bensonville. Like I said, the insane Spanish Cobras and Maniac Latin Disciples were strong allies throughout the 70s and 80s. But then they began to engage in a deadly turf war around 1993. According to criminologist John Haggerton in his book, Insane, the Chicago Way, what began to take shape was a daring plan by gang leaders incarcerated in Statesville. Fernando Prince Fernie Zayas from the MLDs, Anibal Tuffy C. Santiago from the Saint Spanish Cobras and David Ayala from Two Sixers to create a Latino mafia. But Tuffy later put out a hit on Fern, which was backed up by David Ayala of the Two Sixers. This basically caused the MLDs to break away from Two Sixers and Cobras. It is said that David Little D. Ramos had a central committee made up of all leaders of Latin folks, but he was considered a dictator and soon decided that 
he wasn't going to be the leader. He was also a member of the Gangster Disciples Board, and it is believed that he was later killed by Latin dragons. According to Joe Sparks, it is said that Rudy Rios was also influential in forming the Spanish Gangster Disciples. And this HSGD concept, Spanish Growth and Development, was supported by Larry Hoover to bring the Gangster Disciples and other Black folk gangs into an alliance with the Latino folk gangs. Joe also told me that supposedly after Ayala was sent to New Jersey, the name was changed to Our Continued Growth so that Blacks could also sit on the board. But eventually went back to all the original gangs. The Latin folks didn't want the Blacks messing in Latin folks' business. In the late 1980s, the Cobras opened up New Church on the northwest side around Kilbourne and Fullerton Avenue, called the Killing Fields in Logan Square. Their faction on Monticello and Cortland was called Murder City, which branched into Lawndale and Cortland. In the summer of 1989, Francis and Stave YLL Cobras attacked Simon City Royals, which led to a series of fistfights and shootouts to take over Cosisco Park. In 1987, the Cobras opened up at Fullerton and Tripp and Tripp and Dickens in their Mosa neighborhood after battling with Gaylords and Stone Freaks. The Cobras also flipped a section of Imperial Gangsters at Fullerton and Tripp, which is how Cobras became known in that neighborhood. By 1987, younger Spanish Cobras and Latin Disciples did not get along as well as previous older members did. Eventually, fistfights would break out, which escalated into gunfire. Pretty soon, it was all out war. It is said that about 1987, because of all these conflicts with the Maniac Latin Disciples, the Spanish Cobras discontinued their use of the pitchfork as a symbol, which was associated with Maniac Latin Disciples. The Cobras would also end up in a major conflict with fellow allies, the Latin Eagles, starting on the night of September 9th, 1989, when the Eagles threw a party at the Caguas nightclub, which was located on West North Avenue in the Logan Square neighborhood at the time. The Eagles invited Spanish Cobras, Latin Disciples, and Campbell Boys. But as the night went on, a fight broke out between the Latin Eagle and Spanish Cobra, and eventually somebody pulled a gun and started firing. The crowd panicked and ran outside where a massive brawl resulted and ended up in the death of a Latin Eagle named Little Rook. It is said that he was beaten to death by two by fours. After this death, the Latin Eagles and Spanish Cobras went to war, which put a big dent in the coalition. And by 1992, insane and maniac gangs, mainly the Cobras and Disciples, were going at it. And in spite of peace attempts by some people, it looks like that war will never end. In 1992, as head of the Insane Familia, also known as the Black and Green Machine, the Cobras took an alliance of Insane Deuces, Insane Dragons, Orchestra in Albany, Ashland Vikings, Latin Dragons, Deuces, and Harrison Gents, as well as C-Notes, Latin Jivers, and Latin Lovers, who all joined in their war against the Maniacs and Almighty Folks branches. So as I said in the introduction to Chicago Gangs, it's not just folks and people. There are families within those factions, so it can get very complicated and messy. Crack was real big in the late 80s, early 90s. And although most of the media coverage was on the Crips and Bloods, crack was also showing up in Chicago, and both Black and Latino gangs fought over that, just like Crips and Bloods did in L.A. This then resulted in a crackdown by law enforcement in L.A. and Chicago, which flushed many of the gangs out into the outskirts. Of these cities. And of course, in these outlying areas, many of the police did not have gang units, so they're caught off guard and eventually had to create G units to deal with the problems. Throughout the 1990s, the Cobras and Maniac Latin Disciples continued to battle with many, many deaths on both sides. On February 13, 1996, the Spanish Cobras made the front page news when members of the Maniac Latin Disciples attempted a mass execution of members of Spanish Cobras in Humboldt Park. It is said that Johnny Don Loco Almodovar ordered the murders of random Spanish Cobras to avenge the murder of well-respected Maniac Latin Disciple member Hilo earlier in February. The shooting was carefully executed and planned out, except for the fact that all of the victims survived and the Cobras sought revenge. The Cobra leaders met at the Days Inn Hotel near Chicago O'Hare Airport to plan a counterattack on the MLDs. The Cobras even picked out who they're going to kill and when. These hits were to be coordinated with a police scanner, and the Cobras even hired gangs like Insane Deuces and Latin Lovers to help commit these murders to throw the police off. 
This is the word on the street, although the newspapers did not put it that way. And several murders were committed, but not tied together in the press. The shootings ensued for several months until a peace was established between the Cobras and Disciples by the end of 1996. It was in 1996 that West Side Town Cobras shot up a Latin King wedding, which resulted in multiple casualties. This shooting was even caught on videotape and broadcast to local news stations. It is also said that cops would find dead student bodies by the alleys at Calvin Park High School due to the Cobra MLD war. But that was downplayed. Some of you who were there at the time maybe can attest. Chicago PD would come to the schools and have meetings with all the students and tell them to hurry up and go home after school or get a ride and not hang out and become a victim. That's how bad the situation was. Joe Sparks told me that the police presence did things down. And there was some peace talks between the gangs, but that didn't last long. And in 1997, the young Latino organization Cobras shot and killed Omsky and the Maniac Latin Disciples in a parking lot on Armitage Avenue. Omsky was putting groceries in his car alongside his wife. Little Miner, a YLO Cobra, spotted him and gunned him down. Omsky was considered to be the chief or gang leader of the Belden and Kenneth chapter of MLDs. Supposedly he had a previous run-in with Little Miner and Omsky pip pistol whipped him. So Little Miner sought revenge. Like I said, this rekindle of the war in the MLDs and Spanish Cobras still war today. And the only time where there's maybe peace is due to a lot of community intervention during the annual Puerto Rican Day Parade. In January 1998, after a nine-month undercover narcotics investigation, Chicago police arrested 31 Spanish Cobras during Operation Mongoose, which is a wordplay on the Cobras, because in the wild, Cobras and Mongoose will fight each other. This resulted in a major closure of Cobra operations. In the spring of 1999, the MLDs and Spanish Cobras decided it was time to hold peace talks again at the YMCA located on North Lawndale Avenue in Logan Square. Leaders of the Maniacs, the MLDs, YLO Disciples, Maniac Campbell Boys, and Lightning Styler showed up, and the leaders of the same family, such as Spanish Cobras, YLO Cobras, Ashton Vikings, Sea Notes, Insane Dragons, Latin Lovers, and Orchestra in Albany showed up. Peace was agreed upon right away as too many members were dying. But not all MLDs felt that the war should end. A renegade group of MLDs led by Little Bum did not attend the meeting. And instead, drove around the meeting and tried to instigate. After peace was announced, these individuals began screaming out gang slogans and insults in attempts to break down the peace treaty. It said that one MLD named Carlito got isolated as he exited the meeting and as he stepped out of the YMCA, Thomas Outlaw Ross, a member of the MLDs, gunned him down. All of this is said to have been the final straw in the Spanish gangster disciple concept, or La Tabla. And so that really is not heard of anymore today. Let me know if that is correct. By the end of 2001, the Cobras and MLDs couldn't even freeze the war for parades and, and festivals. Things had gotten that bad. Let's hope for the community that you guys can figure out a way to keep the peace. Little kids shouldn't be dying and old ladies and grandmas shouldn't have to die because of your stupidity. Today, the insane Spanish Cobras are considered the second largest Latino folk gang after the Maniac Latin Disciples. And like I said, I'm not sure well, even why they consider themselves folks. Folks seem to kill folks more than they do people. Today, the Cobras are active in Humboldt Park, Hermosa, Logan Park, the Belmont Cragen area, Albany Park, and Kelvin Park, as well as in some of the suburbs of Chicago. They're also known to operate in other parts of Illinois, as well as Milwaukee, Racine, and Kenosha in Wisconsin, and were sometimes found in Detroit and Flint, Michigan in the 1990s up until about 2007. Law enforcement has even reported some Spanish Cobras in Ohio, Connecticut, South Florida, and reportedly even in New Zealand, believe it or not. Now, I don't know if that means one, two, or three. Let me know if there's cobras anywhere else. By the way, this picture that you've seen in the intro video of a tattoo on the back of a cobra was taken by Fred Moreno in Cook County. In the background, you can see my buddy Jeff Stolson looking down the street for any bad guys. Jeff was one of the guys who exposed gangs in the military, and he received a lot of flack for that. 
as well as receiving plaque in a major Midwest Department of Corrections agency. Maybe we'll get back to that another time to give it the attention it deserves. Like I said, I'm not trying to glamorize these gangs. I'm trying to educate the community and law enforcement where they're at and how they operate in the hopes that we can end all this madness. I hope that you learn from this episode and that you come back to view many more. We're almost done with Latino gangs, but I'll cover a few more before we move on to other gangs in the Windy City. Thanks once again to ChicagoGangHistory.com for your well-done research on these gangs. Don't forget to purchase your copy of Chicago-based gangs, Beyond Folks and People, written by myself and Joe Sparks, retired Chicago Police Department gang detective. Our book can be purchased on Amazon.com and other platforms, and it can be ordered from any major bookstore. As always, please take care of each other and stay safe. Until next time, this is Gabe Morales signing off, gangsters, cops, and politicians.